My name is John Nosted. I'm from Bemidji, Minnesota, July 1st, 1936. And uh, I joined the military when I was about 19 years old, 19 years and three or four months. I am the youngest of six children. My, uh, my dad was 40 years, uh, 39 years old when I was born. My mother was 40 when I was born. Uh, the oldest sister I had was 18 when I was born. Then it was two years to the next one, two years to the next one, mm -hmm. and then five years between the last three of us. I see. How about the school you went through? I went to, my education included uh, 12 years of uh, basic uh, school, uh, grade school, and elementary school, and high school. What and high that was, school did you graduate? It was all in Northwood, North Dakota High School. When did you graduate? I graduated in 1954. So did you learn anything about Korean War in, in the class? In, in your high in school? school? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, um, I don't think they taught much about the war that I remember. Most of it was out of newspapers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was, when the war, uh, was bro even before the war broke out, I was a newspaper boy, so I had access to a lot of newspapers. So I was able to keep track of the war pretty well. So even though the war was ended in 1953, yes, you sir. still were in the high school. And yes, sir. the high school history teacher didn't mention... Oh, they. I mean, it, it, there was talked about it, but basically uh, uh, I think my high school teacher when I was in high school mainly it was uh, uh, early American history that they were teaching, so they didn't go into the no modern. And social sciences, yes. In our social studies, we, we had, we'd be talking about the war and stuff, yes. Mm -hmm. What did they, do you remember anything that you heard? <laughs> Not particularly, no. Not particularly. Uh, I mean, I remember the, uh, the war breaking out, how the, the uh, North Koreans invaded, uh, how they went all the way down to the Pusan perimeter. Uh, then the uh, Chinese army came in and uh, caused problems after they were, uh, after we'd gone in there with the landing at Inchung, mm. and uh, they were they come in, and I I remember bits and pieces of it, but I'm a, I might be a little confusing with that with what I have been able to read because I'm a great reader and I've read a lot of stories about. It. That may be the case. So, but, but you sure that they talked about it in your high school? I would say yes. I, okay. I don't see why they would not. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. they've, they've done a pretty good job of education. They're pretty rounded. Okay. And when did you enlist the military? I enlisted when I was 19 years and about three months. When was that? And that was 19, uh, October 27th, 1955. October 27, 1955. 55. Reason that you enlisted? Well, the main reason was I had had a job in Arizona that I was promised when I went out there to go to work. It wasn't, didn't turn to be, out to be. and. Uh, I couldn't seem to get a job of qualified, a good job, mm -hmm. uh, as a non-military because of the uh, obligation of being selective service. So I thought, well, I would enlist. They'd either take me or call me 4F, mm -hmm. and either way, I don't have to worry about the military. Mm. Well, and the Army did accept me. Ah, so where did you go to get the basic military training? I went to Fort Ord, California. Fort? Fort Ord, O-R-D. ORD California. Yes. And what kind of training? I infantry? had uh, I had infantry training and then heavy weapons infantry. Oh. I had eight weeks of each. What kind of heavy heavy weapons? Uh oh, uh, recoilless rifle, mortars, the different size mortars, machine guns. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. There was a. Uh, Four or five other ones that I remember, but I can't. A pistol. I remember we had even the forty-five pistol we worked with. Mm -hmm. Light and heavy work. Two different types of uh, recordless rifles. The uh, one hundred five and a one. No. What is it? I can't remember what gauges they were now. Yeah. Have you imagined that you would being sent to Korea? I had no idea what I was going to be getting when I when I when I just. Uh, they, were, they told us about the end of basic tra or training that uh, it would either be Germany or Korea, and you didn't know till about the day before you left uh, 
Fort Ord to which one you were going to go to. Mm -hmm. So what happened to you after the basic military training? Basically, we got on a, pl uh, air, uh, on a train. They uh, transported us to Fort Lewis, Washington. We stayed there for about two weeks. And uh, then after that, we were boarded a ship. To go to, to Korea? Right, well, yeah, we went to Korea. General A.E. Anderson, as I remember it. Mm -hmm. and Do you remember the date? No. Uh, Month? It, was, it would have been April sometime, early April. Of 56? 56, yes. Wow. Did you stop? in Japan or did you Yes, we stopped for a 12-hour stop at Yokohama mm -hmm. and then we transported over to Okinawa and spent a 12-hour stop there. Mm -hmm. We spent about 23 days aboard the ship getting to Incheon. Finally to the Incheon. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be in May of 56. Uh, I would guess early May, maybe like the 5th or something in May yeah. we would arrive in did you hear about your mission in Korea? The, I you didn't. Was, what I, you were supposed to do in Korea? Well, all I knew was that I was trained for heavy weapons and light infantry training. So I figured I was going to be with an infantry uh, company somewhere in Korea. Mm -hmm. By the way, what was your unit? Well, uh, uh, when I uh, went to the repo depot there, and then they sent me up to the 7th Division mm -hmm. replacement depot. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, when I was there, there, there was a call one day for anybody that had had type experience, typing experience. Well, I had had it in school and stuff, and I uh, had done some office work as a typist. So I, I put my hand up, and they marched about 50 of us over to this area. Took, uh, so four of you guys go there, two of you go there, around we went. And uh, I ended up uh, going to this office that was the G1 office. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the uh, persons selected to be there. Uh -huh. So you were still 7th Division, right? Uh, it's always been 7th Division, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So from Incheon, where did you go? We went north to Camp Casey uh, by Tongdu Chung. Ah. You know Chongdu Chung. Yeah. <laughs> Dongdu Chun. Yeah. Yep. And Kulsani was up the, up the valley from us. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the typical day of your duties. What well, did you do? Where and what did you do? Well, basically, I worked in G1. It was uh, an office work. Uh, I, uh, they would, Reveille would be 6 o'clock. Uh, you'd have a mess at, uh, breakfast mess at 7. 8 o'clock, you'd be uh, maybe fall out for a, a little close order drill or something. And then you'd go to your uh, assigned offices. I worked at the G1, which is the uh, uh, administrative office mm -hmm. for the headquarters. And I worked there as a um, uh, clerk typist for some. And then I went to being a, uh, a working with the st st statistics in the division as to who was assigned to what units, what branches of service and stuff they were trained at. And then I went to the war room and it posted that information on that for uh, for the uh, commander's information. Yeah. What was the situation in the DMZ? Was it really volatile, very dangerous? Every it day? was. We had. Uh, Tell me about those. Well, situations. I wasn't. We were about 20 miles, or it was supposedly 15 miles south of the DMZ where right. we were. Yeah. But I do know that uh, several times uh, that uh, the. Uh, G2, the intelligence, mm -hmm. would come in at night and they'd say, oh, oh, and we'd say, what's wrong? And they'd say, well, there's 15,000 troops amassing 10 miles or 5 miles north of the DMZ, and like they're going to charge the DMZ. We don't know if they're coming or not. Hmm. And uh, next morning you find out that, no, they didn't come. Mm -hmm. But uh, several times we had a scare like that, that, hey, you know, they could be here at our camp at 4 o'clock in the morning if they come in a, in a regular what march, fast march. Mm -hmm. So 56, still the DMZ line was unstabilized. And I did take a trip up there one time as a, as a special trip. Mm -hmm. But the uh, trip was just a, a Sunday outing. And we went up there uh, on a bus, uh, on a truck, I should say. 
and went over what they call it, Freedom Bridge, I think it was, and uh, went up to Pang Moon Jam, yeah. and uh, toured the uh, offices there and stuff that were there. Uh, some of the military people from uh, North Korea were standing guard at different buildings, and we walked over to uh, the Bridge of No Return, <laughs> as they called, told us it was. Right. And uh, so I got a picture down that uh, of a jeep coming across, and uh, it was, it was looks like it was kind of a high tense area there at Pan Moon Jump, I would say, because the, uh, everybody seemed a little bit tense. When I got there at uh, Camp Casey, I was assigned to what they call a squad tent, to eight men inside the tent. Well, that was in early May. Come up toward that fall, about three months or so there, I got uh, somebody rotated back to the states. I was able to get into a Quonset. Six, eight people, uh, eight, six or eight hundred people that were in that headquarters area would go and take their showers there. And uh, that was part of that. We, uh, the food, I, I've always thought that the food was pretty well done. It was well prepared. I thought we had good cooks, and uh, there was. We had a lot of uh, Koreans that we uh, we hired in there. Um, we had the choice of either doing KP or uh, hiring it, and we all. What is KP? Uh, kitchen police. Oh. That's uh, working in the kitchen, uh, helping clean pots and cook, uh, mix up food and all the stuff, whatever goes with getting f uh, meals ready. Mm -hmm. So we didn't do any of that because we paid. Uh, we each paid like three or four dollars. I can I think it was three dollars a, a month. And so they would hire $3 dollars a month. Yes, from uh, each, each, each of us. Oh, yeah, got it. and then uh, then they would uh, pay the uh, kitchen help there for, w out of, with that. And they were they would come seven days a week, walk up to our uh, building there, and uh, and uh, do the meals. Why didn't military pay that? Why do you have to pay your own? Well, it was our duty as a military person to to do that ki I to ki I see. and so it was our choice to either hire somebody to do it or uh, or uh, do it ourselves or mm -hmm. hire somebody to do it were there any soldier or the officers who went through the Korean War working with you at the time that you were there officers yeah oh yeah that was a lot of officers where I was at yes most of no no what I'm saying is those people who fought during the war, yeah. still working there, remain and s working with you? No, most of them had rotated back uh, okay. by the states then mm -hmm. because your tour of duty was generally like uh, 12 to 16 months. You, you didn't stay there for mm -hmm. three or four years. So you, you were not able to hear anything about the Korean War from directly from the soldiers who fought? I don't remember. That. There might have been a couple of that I talked to that were there that were uh, there during the Korean War and come back for a second tour. But I don't. Uh, I can't remember call any of them there being there for that. No. Did you sense that the Korea was heavily developing and reconstructing and trying to modernize at the time? Not at that Did time. Did you see no. any signs? It was. It was. Uh, you know, you got to remember that uh, at that time it was just a year and a half or two years after the war, mm -hmm. and they were just basically trying to get enough money to or enough uh, stuff growing to have food and stuff at that time. I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, they weren't. They weren't having much of a chance to build uh, decent houses or uh, anything like that. Uh, the business places were uh, not fancy buildings or anything. They were pretty basic. I know one time we, I went, I got an opportunity to go into Tung Du Chung, uh, our church group there in in the camp. Went down there for a uh, trans a church program by the uh, by the Sunday school yeah. for Christmas. Yeah. And so we went into the church, and it was, I remember, dirt floors, and they had uh, kind of like blocks of wood or something with uh, planks between them. That was your pews, and uh, it was a couple of, lay, a couple of sheets of uh, plywood in the front for their uh, stage, shall we say, for the program. And it was, but it was pretty well done, I thought, you know, mm -hmm. for what they had to do with. Do you know what happened to Korea after you left? Oh. <laughs> It has fabulously developed. Uh, you've got your cobbles there that have developed into super businesses. Uh, all the cars companies you're making, uh, you're building ships. I mean, what are you, the third or fourth uh, biggest industrial company in the world now? Or no, country? 12th 12, largest economy in the world. 12th largest economy, okay. Yeah. 
What do you think that this U.S. forces in Korea after the war contributed to? Well, I think it uh, made the, uh, the North Koreans and the Russians uh, take a second thought about trying to evade, uh, invade into uh, South Korea again. Mm. I, would, uh, I don't think they wanted a, a second dose of what they got. <laughs> What do you think about the relationship between U.S. and Korea now? I think it's excellent. From what I understand, there's, uh, it's, a, it's an excellent relationship. Uh, Why? Well, just, uh, we both want to have development. We want to improve our countries. Uh, uh, we're both democratic. You know, it isn't like in Afghanistan or Iraq that we went in and helped. And uh, they have their problems now that are, uh, they don't have the... Uh, um, religious wars, shall we say, that they have over there and stuff. You, uh, uh, and you're much more sociable. Yeah, it's, uh, my guess is that just the money spent there by the soldiers and stuff that have been there have stimulated the economy to, to go out and uh, develop this because there's a demand from the American soldiers, and when they've got it there, they've shipped it to other countries that want the same thing. Very good point. You know, like your, your cars, your Kias and stuff like that. Any other message that you want to add to this interview? Well, other than thank you for your hospitality uh, here this week at, uh, at the place, I think and I'm sure if I get a chance to go to Korea, I'll be seeing just as much hospitality there. <laughs>